Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Deborah Smith Gregory, and I serve as the president of the North Branch NAACP. And um, we wanted to take this opportunity um, to have you hear from the mayor, the clergy, and community leaders around this issue of the superintendent, Cami Anderson, and the students who are um, upstairs bravely sitting in and waiting for her to come to work. Um, the first person that I'm going to call to you is Reverend Geis. We have clergy members, we have FOI standing out here in this frigid weather um, in support of the mayor's initiative, in support of the students, and in support of our uh, democratic return to local control. Reverend Geis. Eternal and all wise God, we come this day to say thank you for your love, your care, your peace, and your power. We pray our God for our city. We thank you for the concerns of the clergy in this city who have stood against all problems that has haunted us like a thousand midnight. Father God, we pray that you would bless us now, bless our mayor, that we may be able to overcome this problem and injustice to our children we know that education proposes to train, that the train may think more clearly, work more accurately, and serve more worthy, but those in it are engaged in an endless quest to receive more knowledge. We pray our God that justice will roll down like mighty rivers and righteousness like a mighty stream. We bless this hour. We ask, O oh God, to give us peace, give us joy, and your presence will be known in our hearts and in this city. In the name of he who orders our steps, we pray. Amen. Amen. Because we're putting God first, we ask that Reverend E.T. Bird come and speak, make brief remarks on behalf of all of the clergy that are out here this morning. From the old school, the church has always been an intricate part of the community. We cannot worship on Sunday behind our walls and not be concerned about what's going on in the community. That's why I am out here today because it is the right of all of our students to receive everything that they should have to get a good and excellent education. All of these impediments, all of these political ploys should not be used against our children. We come today to say to this city, this state, and this nation that God is not pleased with what's going on in this situation. Our children deserve better, and it is my prayer to God that they will receive what they deserve. Thank you. Amen. Uh, we have. Um State Senator Ronald Rice and Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker. State Senator. Well, thank you very much. I'm here in support of our young people. You know, it's most unfortunate that we raise children to get a good quality education, which we're supposed to provide to them, and that's in our Constitution. And we also raise them to start to think for themselves and analyze and evaluate. And that's what these students are doing. And what offended me was when I read the paper and saw that community people came to feed these children and the superintendent people would not take the food up to feed our children. It reminded me as a Vietnam veteran and all the war movies that I watch of a concentration camp where there are people inside and they just shove food to you. It reminded me of the fact when you wanted your puppy or your dog to come to you, you get the food to kind of lead them down. I don't think that people understand 
And I try to explain this to the governor, the state government, the president of the legislature and others. The reason we have situations like Ferguson and Staten Island is not because of black and white. It's not because of people stealing or people afraid to patrol our communities. We don't look at the whys. And it's the whys that create this kind of situation. It is what's happened to these kids that keep us on the streets, that keep us energized and motivated. I'm a product of the 1960 movements, not born in the 60s, a product of that movement. I'm 69 years of age for those who may not know that. And so it seems to me that all the marches and things we did with civil rights was so that we would have a voice. We would be able to speak out. We are going back in time, and it's people like Cammie Anderson, and to be quite frank, people like Governor Christie and Davey Hespy and others who deny us the opportunity to have state government come in here and order these books, to have the state come in and investigate the kinds of allegations that are taking place. Any place else, there have been investigations, there have been audits. There are real serious problems here. And as a result of that, we're not going to give up those of us in leadership because it's expected of us. It's our moral responsibility. It's our constitutional responsibility to be the voice of this community and to find out exactly what's going on and to put things in perspective. I'm here for these children because they're our children. And many of them are the leaders of the student bodies within these school systems. That's their constituency base. And they are doing the right thing by speaking up and somebody needs to listen, and somebody will listen sooner or later. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker. Good morning. I'm here to support the students because it's their right. They want to be respected. They want to be included. So does the community. And we're going to be here to support our students all the way because we want to be respected as a community and we've been totally disrespected by Ms. Anderson, and we want some justice now. Uh, before we bring up the mayor, we want to um, have the uh, di executive director of Communities United, Street Trina Scordo, to make remarks. Thank you. My name is Trina Scordo, and I'm the executive director of New Jersey Communities United. Our organization has been assisting the students with this civil disobedience. And in fact, two organizers from New Jersey Communities United have been inside with the students since the beginning of the student occupation. We planned and executed this civil disobedience because Cami Anderson, and more accurately, Governor Christie, have ignored the voices of the community through the inception and implementation of this disastrous One Newark plan. Like other movements before us, civil disobedience is one of the few ways to make our voices heard, our concerns, our hopes, and our dreams heard. It is not surprising to us that Cami Anderson and Chris Christie have reacted to the students in the way they have. They've attempted to bully our children out of the building by denying them access to food provided by the community that supports them. Christie and Cami haven't spoken a single word directly to the press or the community about the demands our children are making. Christie and Cami have sent intimidating letters to parents of the children who are participating in civil disobedience. In short, Christie and Cami have ignored, bullied, and intimidated children and their parents in the same way they have exercised their power over the Newark public school system. This is exactly the type of behavior that has agitated the Newark community and fed the movement to restore local democratic control over public schools. And although we are demanding that Cami Anderson resign, this movement will not rest until the people of Newark have full local control over their public school system. Thank you. Now, yesterday you heard from uh, parents and you heard from students. Uh, today you are hearing from legislators and the mayor of the city of Newark, Mayor Raz Baraka. Good morning, good morning. So, uh, like everyone said, we are out here in this cold weather uh, supporting our young people in this building today. Uh, they're obviously frustrated about not being able to have a voice in what happens around their own education. Uh, as the mayor of the state's largest city, I am also frustrated that I do not have a say-so in what's happening in the education 
uh, of the children that exist and live in these communities, uh, like so many parents in this community who are also frustrated that they also do not have the opportunity to have a voice uh, in what's going on here in Newark Public Schools. Uh, there has been the narrative that everything is okay. It is clear today that everything is not okay. The narrative has been going out that the superintendent is doing fine. In fact, uh, one reporter said to me that they said she won. Uh, it's, also, it's, it's offensive that we even talk about it like that, that she won, won what? What have we won? Uh, obviously things are not the way uh, we're reporting it to be. There are kids who have been barricaded in this building for at least two days and two evenings. Uh, we are here to support those children and we're here to say that it's time for the superintendent to leave. Uh, while those kids were in the building, she was off somewhere having a good time and did not see it fit to come and have a discussion with the kids to try to get them out of the building, to talk to parents, community activists, to talk to leaders, legislators, elected officials, not one comment from her, not one comment from the state superintendent, not one comment from the governor's office. We have kids here who are enacting in civil disobedience and not one person thinks it important enough to make a comment or even negotiate with these young people at all. Uh, I just heard that the superintendent was actually renewed yesterday. It is, it, it is, it is unfortunate and it, and it flies in the face of 300,000 residents of this community of a superintendent who has clearly failed. And she's failed by her own measures, not by my own, but by her measures. The renewed schools uh, that she's touted has failed. They have not shown the significant improvements uh, that they were su supposed to show. There's been an increased budget deficit every single year that she's been here. The budget is getting worse and worse and worse as the years go on. Uh, because of the EWPS list or the educators without placement list that she has a room where educators are being placed that is sucking money out of the budget every single year and is making, difficult, making it difficult for us to enact programs for our young people in this city. There's still parents who have been denied the option to go to schools in their neighborhood. So this program that was supposed to tout school choice is actually opposed to school choice because parents don't have the choice to send their kids to the school across the street from their home. This is a problem. It's been a problem in this city for years. It's not been a problem just when I became mayor. It's been a problem before that, and it's a problem now. And, and, and this is the problem that we want to bring to an end. And, and I applaud the efforts of our young people who are uh, enacting their democratic rights to oppose what is happening here in this city. And we're not going to allow them to be starved, to be arrested. Uh, their Bull Connor does not live in the city of Newark. Hey. Bull hey. Connor. Bull Connor is not here in Newark. This is not Selma in 1965. It is Newark in 2015. We support our young people. We will not vilify them. We will not arrest them. We will not starve them. We will support them. As a matter of fact, this is a part of their educational process. What we should be doing is talking to them and figuring out what their concerns are, what their issues are, and working to make sure that their issues and concerns are met. That's what leaders do, not leave them in rooms to starve and hopefully that they come outside and we can spirit them off and act like nothing happened at all. It's a travesty that we have to be out here in the cold. No one wants to do this. No one wants to be out here, but we must and we have to to support our young people, and we have to take a strong stand on that. And, I, and as the previous speaker said, once uh, the superintendent leaves, we have a lot of work to do to begin to restore uh, what needs to happen in this community and in this city. We have to restore local control. We have to give the residents of this community their voice and their democratic rights back. Yeah, they can. Uh, does anyone have, we have a couple of questions, uh, time for a couple of questions, just a couple. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor can you expand a little bit on what you've heard about the superintendent's contract uh, and what that means for this moment? Well, I just heard that, that the, they got word that the superintendent's contract was renewed. What's unfortunate about it is that the elected advisory board did not have an opportunity to weigh in on that. Uh, none of the, the legislators uh, in this community had an opportunity to weigh in on that. I, I most certainly had not been given the opportunity to weigh in on it. Uh, none of the collective bargaining units, uh, uh, nor uh, any of the, uh, you know, the community organizations have been allowed the opportunity to weigh in on it. It seems to me that the residents of the city and the officials here should have the opportunity to have a say-so and who governs their community, right? So we had no opportunity to weigh in on it, and we were not given a heads up about her renewal. Uh, we just were given word that it happened. Mayor, how, how long did this go? The, uh, how long did this go with the students? Obviously, 
Uh, I, have, I have no idea how long they're going to be in there. Uh, I, I didn't tell them to do it. They're smart enough to make decisions on their own. But, uh, you, know, I, uh, you know, as long as they do it, uh, we're going to support them as long as they stay in there. You're okay with them not being in school? Huh? You're okay with them doing this instead of school? Oh, this is school right here. Right. I mean, this is, a, this is uh, uh, you know, what we call YPAR. Uh, you know, it is an opportunity for them to do research, active, public, uh, advocacy is a part of education. I mean, what better way to learn history than to be a part of it? That, that concludes this press conference. Huh? Uh, I'll find out in a minute. I'm going to go up there and see uh, how they're doing, make sure they're not starving and they're warm and, you know, that they're doing okay. I'll go up there and, and, and say hello and let them know that the community supports their efforts. Have you reached okay. out directly to the superintendent at all? And if so, what is your response been? No, we, we have uh, reached out to her office. We're planning on uh, trying to meet with her this week or to be in the next week so we can be begin talking about what the students demands are and how we begin to transition her uh, to move out of the city of Newark right, and begin yeah. to uh, uh, return local control back to the city of Newark. It seems to me that the best way that she can help the community and she should be supportive of that is to remove herself from being the superintendent. That's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.